gang, welcome back. We're talking about combined loads. I think it's one of the hardest things for my students to grasp is what's going on. There is so much going on on these combined load problems, okay? Like this problem here, I've got a shaft coming out from a wall with a gear on the end of it, and it's got one, two, three different forces on it. The thing about combined load problems is that one force can cause all of these things, right? One force can cause shear stress, vicket, right? Shear stress. It can cause torsion, twisting, TC over J stress. In the normal stress department, it can cause MC over I, bending stress. And then also it can cause P over A, just compression or tension stress. And so for everything we're gonna do, like for this problem, find uh, for the bevel gear with the given loading, find the total sigma and tau acting on point B. And it says, hey, while we're there, let's do point A too, okay? So what we're gonna do is this, okay? These are my stress elements. Do you remember stress elements? Okay, we gotta find the stress element for A and the stress element for B. What's that gonna look like? It's gonna look like this, okay? There's gonna be shear stress, and then there's gonna be normal stress. Uh-oh, I'm overlapping here, no! Okay, there you go, all right? We gotta find out which way the arrows go on these stress elements and how big the components are, okay? So for any one force, right, every single force can cause bending, compression or tension, shear or um, torsion stress, right? So we have to evaluate each force for all four of those things. There's one more thing that could be over there, and this could be a hollow pipe that we pressurize with pressure. Then we'd have PR over T and PR over 2T also but luckily this isn't one of those problems, okay? So let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna show you how I think about it and see if that helps us solve this, okay? So the first thing I like to do is draw the cross section that I'm interested in. So I'm interested in this cross section right here and I've got this and I've got here's point B and here's point A, okay? And what I'm gonna do is this. This gets a little bit confusing because there's a lot going on here, but what I'm gonna do is this. Always when I draw these cross sections, I'll draw this, okay? That, just an arrow down, means shear, okay? That means shear. If I draw this, okay, that means torsion. If I draw this across the middle, that means, that's a bending moment. Okay, and then right in the center of the stress of the, of the circle, I'll either draw a plus or I'll draw a minus, okay? And that to me indicates that there's either a force pushing, which would be a minus, right? Because compression is negative, or a plus, which means that there's just a P over A that's making the shaft longer, right? So this is my P over A stress, this is my MC over I stress, that's my TC over J stress, and that's my VQ over IT stress. Now I'm gonna do these things for every single one of the forces acting on this because what happens if I have, if I have this, right? What happens if I have that? Well, then I can take this one and that one and add them together and find out what is the resultant of those two torsions, right? Because I might have one that makes me spin uh, clockwise and one that makes me spin counterclockwise, but when I add them together, my net is still a counterclockwise, right? So I just need to find out what that net is. So there's going to be a lot of arrows going on, especially with three forces, uh, and I'm going to I'm going to draw kind of this diagram that has shear on it, that has torsion, bending, and compression. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to go one force at a time, and let's see if we can do this. Okay, so there's our cross section. Let's start off with this guy right here, 200 pounds, okay? 200 pounds, what's he doing? Well, okay, number one, on that cross section, does he cause shear, which is just a downward force? Yes. So up here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redraw this higher up, or be lower down. 
Let me give myself a little bit more room here. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, here we go. So here's the first one is this guy right here. 200 pounds, okay? He definitely causes that. Here's point A, here's point B, okay? What else? What else does the 200 do, okay? Does the 200 cause torsion? Well, he's out here on the perimeter, so yeah, he's gonna make me spin this direction here, isn't he? And how much torsion is that? Well, it's force times distance, and the distance is this radius, three inches. So 200 times three, is 600 inch pounds, okay? Let's go to the next thing down there. Does he cause bending? Does the 200 cause bending? Yes, right? It's, it's the force that's making this thing, the 200 is making the whole thing bend downwards, right? Point A being on the top, he's gonna be in tension, isn't he? So I'm gonna say that this is 200 times eight inches, right? Which is 1600, I'm gonna do this, whoop. Okay, 1,600 inch-pounds. There he is, okay? What else is he? Is he causing compression, P over A stress? Mm, no, he is not causing any compression, okay? All right, so that's got him. Let's go to the next guy, the 125. Does he cause shear? Yes, and it is 125 like this. Okay, and that shear is V, right? This is like V equals, V equals, a shear force, right? Next one, does he cause torsion? Well, since he's pushing right on the center of the shaft, the answer is no, no torsion, okay? Does he cause bending? Yes, but not in the this direction here, but in this direction here, right? So he causes bending, 125 times eight. What is 125 times eight? 800 plus 200 more, it's a thousand, isn't it? Okay, so it's gonna cause like this. 1,000 inch pounds, okay? There's a lot of stuff gonna be going on in my little diagram here, but we're gonna figure it out, okay? So a thousand, does he cause any P of, over A stress? Does he cause any compression? Um, no, it does not, okay? Okay, so that's got the 125. One more to go, the 75. Does the 75 cause any shear? No, because he's just doing a compressing act there, isn't he, right? He's just causing that bottom guy down there, P over A, and it's compression. So right here in the middle, I'm gonna put a big minus right there in the middle, right, from the 75. 75. Okay, does he cause any torsion? Well, no, he doesn't cause it to twist at all. Does he cause any bending? Yes, if it was pushing right in the middle, the answer would have been no. But since it's pushing off on the perimeter, there's a little bit of a moment, right? And that little bit of a moment is actually going, let's see, let's see, that moment is gonna be going this way, isn't it? Okay, where this one caused that shaft to bend into the board, the 75 causes it to bend out of the board, okay? Now what's the force? The force is 75 and what's the distance? The perpendicular distance is only three, okay? So 75 times two is 150 plus another 75 is 225. 225, okay? Are you with me on this? There's a lot going on here, right? I'm gonna leave everything the way it is except for one thing, and that is I have these two bending moments. I have one going this way and one going that way, right? And so what happens is, is this bottom one here just winds up taking off of that top one, right? So if we take, if we take on, clear, if we take a thousand, right, and we subtract from that 225, we get 775. So let's just erase this bottom guy down here. Okay, and let's turn this top guy into 775, okay? You understand what I, what I did there? I just combined them. It's combined load, and we just combined the load. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, 
So there's a lot going on in this graph. I got shear force, I've got torsion, I've got bending this way and that way, and then I've got compression. So let's go, okay? Let's talk about point A, okay? We've got two things to do. We got sigma A and we got tau A, okay? So sigma A, is point A being compressed? Yes, everything is being compressed, right? We got sigma A, here's sigma B, tau B, okay? So A and B both are being compressed from the 75, right? So that's gonna be negative P over A, 75 pounds divided by, ooh, what's the area? What's the area? How big is that? Where is it? Right there. Uh, the area is, uh, the, the diameter is one, so how about pi r squared? Pi times 0.5 squared inches squared, right? And B experiencing the same thing, negative 75 pounds divided by pi times 0.5 squared, okay? So that got this guy completely. Doo -doo. So we got this one in the middle here, right? We got this guy is done. I'm gonna take him away, because he's done, okay? He's done. Okay, how about MC over I stress? Okay, now I am point A, okay? The 775 is bending this way, okay? Here's my, here he is, right? Point B is on this side over here. The 775 is making me do this number, okay? Oh, point A is on top, isn't it? So if I'm bending this way, where's point A? Because this side is in tension, this side is in compression, but point A is right in the middle, so point A is what? It's on the neutral axis. So the 775 doesn't affect point A, okay? Does the 775 affect point B? Okay, here we go, 775. Yeah, point B is on this side. Point B is in tension, so what does that mean? It's a positive, okay? And so MC over I, 775 inch pounds times C. C is the distance from the neutral axis to the point of interest. And so that's gonna be 0.5 inches, okay? Divided by I, I for a round shaft is what? Pi over four D, I mean, sorry, R to the fourth. Okay, and that's got the 775, right? We, we took care of you. Okay, we'll get rid of him. It's getting simpler now that stuff is going away, isn't it? Okay, now what do we have? We have 1600 bending. The 1600 is bending me down, okay? Where's point B? Point B is over here on this side, in the middle. So point B is on the neutral axis. So the 1600, doesn't affect point B, does he? He's on the neutral axis, no stress, okay? Point A, as the 1600, point A is on top. So what's he in? Tension, right? So we're gonna have a positive for tension, okay? And we're gonna have MC over I, here we go. M is 1600 inch pounds, okay? Times C, again, 0.5 inches divided by I, which is the same I down there, pi over four, times 0.5 to the fourth, inches to the fourth, and that's got my 1600 taken care of, okay? So we took care of all of the sigma stress in both A and B, all right? Now we're on to tau stress, okay, what? BQ over IT, oh boy. All right, I'm at point A. Okay, now remember, when you're fig figuring VQ over IT, okay, the neutral axis, the bending neutral axis, right, is always perpendicular to the V-force. So when I'm calculating the V-force from the 200, I'm talking about a neutral axis that's here, okay? When I do the 125, the neutral axis is this way. It's always perpendicular, okay? 
So let's talk about the 200, okay? Well, if I am calculating VQ over IT, okay, for a shear this direction, which means my neutral axis is horizontal, okay, how do I calculate Q? Do you remember how to calculate Q? What is Q? The sum of the Y times A, right? Above or below the part of point of interest. So how much area is above point A? None. What does that mean? That Q is zero for the 200, which means the 200 doesn't cause any shear whatsoever at point A, okay? The 200 doesn't, does he do anything for point B? Well, yeah, he does, right? Because what is Q for point B? Q for point B is this. It's all of that area above point B, isn't it? Okay, so let's do this. Let's write down tau for point B, and it would be this, VQ over IT. So V is 200, okay? Q, oh, Q is that shaded area, so it's Y times A, okay? So the, the area is pi R squared, pi R squared divided by two, isn't it? Right, because it's a half a circle times Y bar. So where is Y bar, right, of that area? Where is Y bar of that area? Hey, that's half a circle. I remember that from my centroid table. It's, uh, it's 4R over 3 pi, isn't it? So times 4R, 0.5, over 3 pi, okay? So this is Y bar, that's A, right? So this is V, Q divided by, divided by what? I, T. I, we got I everywhere, don't we? There's I right there. No, there's I right there. Pi over 4 times 0. 0.5 to the 4th, okay? That's I times T. What's T? What's the thickness? How much beam do I have to tear away? We'll have to tear away that thickness right there. The thickness is one, okay? Woo! That's VQ over IT for point B, okay? So I'm just gonna move this 200 over here, just like this. Look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move him over here. Boom! There he is. He's still pressing down, but I just moved him over so I can see him pressing on point B, okay? Now, same exact steps, but now let's talk about the one, two, five, okay? So now my neutral axis is horizontal, okay? So this is my neutral axis for the one, two, five. Does the one, two, five make shear at point B? How much area is above point B? How much? Well, a grand total of zero, okay? So, now we move over to point A. How much area is above point A? Well, it's this area here, right? So it's just like we did before down here, but uh, but uh, different direction, okay? So this is about point A. So it's VQ over IT, V, 125. Q, okay? Same thing as it was down here. Pi times 0.5 squared divided by two times that guy, Y bar, right? Which is uh, four R over three pi, okay? Divided by IT pi over four times 0.5 to the fourth times one, okay? And so that's the one, two, five. And the one, two, five doesn't affect point B, but he affects point A. I'm just gonna move him over here like this. Okay, one, two, five. Okay, because now what? Well, now it's torsion time, okay? So what I'd like to do is this. If I am at, if I have torque this way, right? When that torque comes around to point B, okay? What's it doing at point B? 
It's pushing down, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is this tau that I figured down there is gonna to add to this TC over J tau that's also going down at point B, okay? So I'm gonna have this additional shear force over here, shear stress rather, okay? So TC over J, T is what? 600 inch pounds, 600 inch pounds times C, what's the distance from the neutral axis to the point of interest? 0.5, and J, what's the difference in this I and J that goes over there? Instead of pi over four, J is pi over two. R to the fourth, 0.5 to the fourth, okay? Now let's talk about point A, right? As that torque comes around to point A, which way is he pointed? Well, the 125 went that way, but the torque here is working against the 125. So he is actually going to subtract, subtract, right? And don't worry about the signs on this right now. You just always consider this, this guy here, the VQ over t IT. Always consider him positive when calculating this. And I'll show you how to fix the sign here in just a second. Super easy, okay? So this guy here, the 600 is working against the 125, so minus. But the same number, isn't it? 600 times 0.5 times pi over 2 times 0.5 to the fourth, okay? Same number. So that's it. So now I need an equals, an equals, an equals, and an equals, okay? Let me calculate that, and I'll tell you what those equal. Okay, so I've like got all this added up here, so here we are going to final calculation. 16297.5 minus 95.5 is 16202, and that's PSI, okay? And the next one down here, 212.21, uh, minus 3055.77 is gonna be 28, ne it's negative, 28, 43.6, okay, again, PSI, okay, then the next one, 7894.1 minus 95.49 equals uh, 7798.6 PSI. And last one, 339.53 plus 3055.77 equals 3395.3. Okay, PSI. Okay, <laughs> are you with me? Holy cowabunga, dude. Here we go. Let's see if we can figure out our directions now, okay? Last step. Number one, I'm only going to have, right, on point A, a compression in the Y direction. So I'm only gonna have a compression in one direction, right? I'm not gonna have anything in the X direction. So on my A, I'm gonna have a sigma stress of 16.2 KSI. Okay, and we said what? Well, this was in t a compression, but that guy was in tension, and guess who won out? It's in tension, isn't it? So I got a positive value over there, right? And then this guy over here, right? This is sigma y, sigma x equals to zero. Same for this guy. Sigma x equals to zero. 
sigma y, what did we get? We got a, a positive value again, so intention. Uh, 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 uh. This guy is, uh, what do we say? 7798.6. Or we could say, oh, let's do it like the other one. How about 7.8 KSI, okay? And that is my sigma y. Okay, for, for point B. Now let's talk about tau stress, okay? So if we look at point A, okay, who made the shear for point A? The 200, right? No, point A. Uh, who made the shear for A? Uh, where is he? The 125. Okay, so the 125. So if I look straight down this beam, like this, here's what the beam looks like. Oh, let me draw it like this. This is so confusing, y'all. Okay. Here's the 125. Okay. So this is looking like straight down on the beam. If your eyeball is looking straight down the y-axis, what would you see? I would see this with the 125 pushing on me. Here's my little stress element right there, right? Here's how you find the direction. We know how big the shear is. It's 28.43.6, 28.43, which is going to be, let's just call it 2.84, 2.84 KSI. But which way do the arrows go, okay? So which way do the arrows go? So on the Y face, on the Y face, because I'm looking at the Y face here, okay, this goes this way, this goes this way. So then my little stress element has to be like this, doesn't it? Okay. If the 125 goes up, the next place is down. The next place here, okay? Which means that that Y face, because here's, this is the X direction, okay? This is the Y direction. So the Y face has to go up on this side and down on that side, right? So if I'm looking at that, it's gonna go this way, right? Yeah, and then this, it's gotta go that way, this has gotta go that way, it's gotta go that way, okay? Gosh, that's confusing, I hope that makes sense to you. If I'm looking straight on at B, I'm looking down the x-axis, right? What do I see? Well, I see the 200 doing this, the 200, okay? So what does that mean on the x, right? in the y direction on that, that on point B, it's going exactly the opposite direction as it was there. Down, this has got to go up. Up, down, up, down, right? So on B, it's going to be exactly the opposite it was on A. So it's going to be over here. Okay, and the tau there is going to be 3.4 KSI. Okay, so that's it. That's confusing. I know that's confusing. You have to change your point of view, put your little stress element in the middle, and ask yourself, okay, if that goes down, then he goes up, then that goes down, that goes up, right? And you can come up with those arrow directions for your stress element. Holy cow. <laughs> One of my students says, I think I'm going to drop in me. I can't do these problems. Come on, we can do them. Take your time, draw your little graph of all the effects of your forces. Now this one had three on it. Three is a lot because you just get a lot of stuff going on, okay? God, I hope I didn't lose you. There, that's a tough problem, man. There's a lot of stuff going on. That is not easy. If you're still with me, wait till you see the next video. I hope that helps you. See you on the next video.